exploration of their lives beyond our mythic fascination, and where Judas and Jesus are shown together as children, and where familial dysfunctions are made new with addiction that feels somewhat akin to alchemy, because this is work that has the power to transform sensibilities. Mikhail's work has appeared or is forthcoming in journals such as the Deloitte Poetry Journal, the New York Quarterly, Hank, among others. Becoming Judas is her second book. Her third, In the Circus of You, will soon be released by Rose Metal Press. She's the director of the Living Poetry Project and is an assistant poetry editor for Connotation Press and the Los Angeles Review, and has taught poetry at Youth for Positive Change, and has worked with Volunteers of America in their Homeless Youth Center. She currently teaches at Antelope Valley College and resides in Lancaster, California with her son, JJ. I give you Mikhail Bader. Wow, thank you. Thank you for everyone that risked the rain and uh, are here today. I'm very grateful for that. Grateful to see familiar and loving faces. Really grateful to be reading today with Kate Gill and Gregory Orr. So, um, poetry as survival. I, I mean, like, I came to poetry as a means to survive. Um, so, uh, happened when my grandmother handed me a book of John Keats, because she was really busy, and that was her way of babysitting me. She's like, don't talk to me until you understand this book. <laughs> And I spent years trying to figure out that book, and it wasn't until I read Gregory Orr's essays on John Keats that I could at least understand how the magic worked and how survival is possible. And then Kate Gale, I love poetry, and Kate Gale built a small home for me to live with it in. And so Kate Gale makes my sky taller. So I'm grateful to be in the room with these two people. Um, so, becoming Judith, so um, I have, Basically three, I have this book, and then a book coming out, and a book coming out, because I'm very fortunate. And uh, they're all concept pieces, so I thought I'd give you a little taste of all three. So the first one is from Red Hen Press, it's Becoming Judas. And um, in it, I basically um, turn John Lennon into Jesus, and I turn myself into Judas. And uh, we do all sorts of naughty things together, so I'll read you a couple of those poems. Flash. Lieberitz's photo of John and Yoko. Of course, you have to read about John Lennon when you're in New York City. <laughs> um, Polaroid. Yoko Ono in jeans and a black sweater lies on her back, a straight line. Her hair surges above her head, a rooted chaos. She's a rib sucked dry of flesh. He kisses her cheek. She's unaffected. His touch adds only another layer to her. He looks like he knows the bullet's coming, five times coming. He's lost her once already. She's still cold from being in earshot of the sound of him with another woman. Together they have survived each other. John curls naked and fetus style at her side. His arms frame her face. His legs bent into inverted Vs encase her torso. Captured, the sight of a man becoming a shrine. Okay, so this little poem is so short that you can't blink your ears or you'll miss it, so. <laughs> Asleep with Jesus. The ground is a full church without singing. The woman who cut Judas down had lost her son. This body strung from a branch could be anyone, even hers. She climbed the tree to chew through the rope and bring down the stopped heart that had grown within her. On the ground, she gathered him to her, whole self shaking as a baptism worked its way out from in her, words beyond human articulation, fever, and a cry mistaken for pain. Um, so from, from church, we're gonna go to a circus. So um, with my dear friend, Cheryl Gross, who, who we work together, she illustrates most of my books. Um, and then we also do motion graphics. We do naughty cartoons that tell you poems together. <laughs> and so this is a project that we were working on where I looked at the sex lives of sideshow freaks and then we turned it into a book that hopefully makes us all a little more human. So I'll read you a poem and then I'll try to show you one of her beautiful pictures to kind of give you an idea of how grateful I am to know this woman and work with her. 
So, um, my understanding of love between women or la manchie de cœur. Is a shown scene on YouTube. You watch paper clothes stapled onto a naked woman with an upholstery gun. Her mouth sewn closed with a hand needle. In the background, string instruments strike dissonance, a voice repeating, the body is dead, the body is dead, the body is dead. But you see her blink. Another woman acts upon her. With each stitch, you see them unite. She's obviously in pain. Others she obviously considerate of this pain. Each flinches slightly at contact, but does her best not to acknowledge the ins and outs of thread. So I'm pretty impressed with how kind ladies are to each other, even in the most cruel situations. But here's one of Cheryl's drawings. I don't know if you can anyone see it, but I love what she does. It's amazing. Um, so now my understanding of love from a man or the rubber boy. Born same year as I, 1979. Straight jacket routine, done backwards. He first did it to be cheeky, to lose his job. Now he is famous for escapes into restraint. The world's only living interologist. Self-discovery, age four. He fell from his bunk bed and landed split in half. Then books with pictures, contortion, mimicry as hobby, final act. Dislocates hip from shoulder, carefully rearranges ribs, drops heart below sternum so an audience can watch his heart beating. Um, I wasn't quite, oh, there's the picture. So somehow I made the picture, I'm sorry. So I don't know if you can see his beautiful little heart beating beyond his sternum, but I didn't know how anyone would draw this, but she did a great job. <laughs> um, so, then we have my understanding of love of self or what I can recall from the film, The New Sideshow. Lucifer says, I ask the audience if they want blood. Always the answer is yes, until bleeding. Then they all yell, no, 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 no. The act in summary is this. With a syringe, she pours herself into a cup and drinks. She makes this look like hunger's first contact with consumption. Lips so erect you can see her mouth pulsing. Lucifer says, I had a normal childhood. Maybe spent too much time alone with a book of matches. <laughs> um, so the new project is a Red Hen project too. So grateful for Red Hen. What an incredible poetry family that is. Um, so with the encouragement of Kate Gale and her edits, which are actually on these pages, <laughs> Um, she is helping me put together a book about the Waldorf wife, which is sort of, uh, it's looking at an old, old myth. It's the myth of um, how architects didn't understand how empty space worked. Like, how do walls stand up if there's not a hole, like a, a soul to basically keep the structure upright? So kings and architects used to, like, do human sacrifices, and they would bury one of their wives alone, like, alive in the walls. So, right? <laughs> <laughs> and so I started thinking about this a lot, became rather obsessed with it. And so for the past six years, I've been asking friends and loved ones, people that I trust a lot, to bury me alive so I can figure out what that is, how it works. So here are my experiments in being buried alive. One, alive in naked earth. Holding shovel is a boy. Not a boy so much as a body growing. How his skin patch of ground is like a bed. What can't be sown in youth? Clean well mouth, spring of throat, new. My skin's a stained sheet tied to a dry line. I've asked him to fold and bury me. He'll do as instructed, spade corner to garden corner. Hands of earth against my mouth. There was a time I believed in the all consuming. I want to believe again. Holding a shovel is a boy. Buried alive, I reclaim something. Remember when love smelled like rain? You know what pretty was. <laughs> Two, buried alive in center block. I should probably preface this. I asked all of my college students, I teach at a community college, and so I asked them to take center block and bury me alive in this small like cement structure. They were delighted to bury their teacher alive, and so I stood in this structure for about, mm -hmm about six hours and they like painted graffiti on the walls and we took it apart and made a unity wall out of it. It was really 
I was very proud of them. Buried alive in center block, my students build me into a tower, standing for three hours, reading old texts aloud. I have no idea what they are doing on the other side of me. Eventually, they pull back the bricks to rebuild graffiti. A girl who cannot hear has drawn a sun and sunglasses. <laughs> the man in charge of safety admits, I enjoyed that. I really did. Truth told, so do I. Isn't this the story we've longed for? Babel, that universal reach towards something larger than self? I ask what's to be remembered, and no one knows what to say or how it is to be said. Three, masturbating in someone else's bed. I'm not home when he begin I'm not home when he begins to ignore me. I hold my breath until blinded by asphyxiation. I am again void, again invisible, light. It's all heat now. I turn towards myself. She has our face in our hands. She's pounding it into ground. A sky snatches ocean. Held high, she drops me. A skyline fall. Covered in blood, I come sobbing with the automatic song of pleasure. My fingers red stains. Robins fluttering over broken eggs. Their wings sound like questions. Why? Why? So this is my two poem morning and, and just, just immense gratitude to everyone. Thank you. Um, footnote number nine, cling to. In me is a little girl I've locked away. When she tries to escape, I slap her face until palms sleep. That is to say, I sing myself to sleep when her tears surface on our face. When we face each other, I tell her to shut the fuck up before they find us. They who will do more than hurt her. They who will break her entirely a song. When we sing, we sing to be birds, to fly beyond hands and onto eye shot, those bullets that burst hearts into origin rhythms. There is a freedom in being seen without hands breaking wings. She believes in everyone, will hand wings over to any palm to prove we are better than bleeding. I believe in her only. Only her I keep from going blood dry. Safe in other, she's in place. In me is a little girl I've locked away. Turn falcons and ravens. I pay too much to ride the express for a one night stand with London. From 10 p.m. to 5 a.m., I walk church to church. The straps of my carry-on cutting into my shoulders. By morning, I'm bleeding. I sing off the cold with American pop. Come, let the rain come down, let the rain come, come down, down. I step over Saturday's youth, sprawled drunk on the ground. Their exposed thighs, soft moons rising from wet concrete, an edible light. I wonder if there is a love beyond consumption. Should have, come, I sing, let the rain, should have insisted, sing, come on, a condom. I continue to wander off years of alone from church to church, confessing like rain, remembering how your body arched like a steeple, your voice shucking off cold. In this space, I believed in more than 10 to five, believed in sex as baptism, but now it's sing, come down morning. I'm bleeding wet and cold. You're no walkable distance and I'm out of churches. Yet the sleepless nights keep coming without hope for forgiveness. So I sing, never meant sorrow, never meant pain. Let the rain, let the rain, let the rain come down, down, down. Thank you.